What's up? Welcome back, guys, to the next lesson. Eric here with FisherDrumming.com. Let's get into this. So we're going to talk about how to improve our singles and doubles. Right? Singles and doubles, there's nothing more fundamental and important to focus on with our hands than singles and doubles. If you don't have a good single stroke roll, your drumming is going to suffer. Same with doubles. Now, it's important that we develop our singles and doubles evenly. You don't want to be able to play your singles a lot faster than your doubles. You should be able to play them both at the same tempo, uh, with evenness, with clarity. So that way you can interchange them. We know that most rudiments are made up of just singles and doubles, right? Think of a paradiddle, two singles and a double. So you got to use these together and you need to develop that evenness, that flow between singles and doubles. So that's also part of this lesson is I want to help you develop that evenness, that flow between singles and doubles. And there's a very great exercise for that. I'm going to show you a couple easy, simple exercises that you can start doing to improve your singles and doubles right away. Let's get started. <laughs> Now here's the main exercise that I want you to practice. It's also an exercise that will very clearly show you, do you have evenness between your singles and doubles? If you don't, it's going to show up right away in this exercise because we're playing singles and doubles back to back. So the simple exercise is you're playing 16 singles, okay? Or if you want to count quarter notes, that's one bar of 16th notes, right? One, two, three, four. All right, then you do the same thing with doubles. One, two, three. Three, four. Cut that in half, then play eight notes each. One, two, three, four. Okay, then play it in quarters. One, two, three, four. All right, so the whole thing singles, two, three, four, doubles, two, three, four. Singles, doubles, singles, doubles, singles, doubles. Now we're going to be repeating each chunk of this exercise. So you're playing a full measure of those 16th notes with the singles, then doubles. Then you want to repeat that again. You want to sit on that for a while. Then when you go to a half measure of singles, half measure of doubles, you want to repeat that one. Then when you go to quarter singles, quarter doubles, quarter singles, quarter doubles, you want to repeat that as well. So everything gets a repeat. That way you're really sitting and soaking it in. It makes the exercise a little harder. It's not going as quick. You have a minute to sit on each one. When you're doing those quick changes, you got to have that really good muscle memory and that really good evenness to be able to switch between singles and doubles when you're playing that last part especially. Right? That's going to clearly show you, are your singles and your doubles even? Or do you have this strength with singles and then your doubles are just piddling behind? And you're struggling right there. Oh, that's going to be a clear sign. Hey, I need to work on my doubles and get them up to par with my singles or vice versa. Now I'm going to show you the full exercise at 80 beats per minute so you can get familiar with it, memorize it, play it with me, and then we'll look at the technique behind it. As we get faster, it's going to be harder to keep that consistency and those notes nice and even between our singles and doubles. So I want to show you a couple important technique things that you need to be practicing, that you need to be aware of when you're playing singles and doubles to get that nice, even sound. One, two, three, four. Now, as you can see, my hands are very relaxed. I'm not forcing any of these notes. I'm keeping my hands nice and open. I'm not gripping, doing a death grip on the sticks. You want to hold the sticks very relaxed, almost like you're going to drop them, as loose as you can hold them without dropping your sticks and then falling out of your hands. Stay loose. That's the first thing. Stay extremely loose. Let the stick do the work. Stop constricting the stick. If you grip that stick, now all of that natural movement and energy and rebound in the stick is going to be gone. It's going to go up your arm. You're losing it. Let the stick do that natural work. Now, fulcrum with your middle finger, not your index finger. Your index finger is not the best finger to be putting that focus on of where you want the stick to fulcrum. Your, middle, your index finger should be more relaxed and out of the way. Your middle finger is where you're really gripping the stick with. It allows you to create a little bit of a space between 
uh, your your palm and the stick. You don't want your whole palm to be gripped around it like a caveman. Um, when you get faster, it's okay if that closes a little bit because there's not as much room to go around. But when you're playing it loose, it should be nice and open. When you're playing it slower, I mean. You wanna try to keep that open. Now let's bump up the tempo, then I'll give you a couple more tips on technique to help that. So let's look at it a little faster now. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Let's do it again. Watch the evenness of the notes. I'm not constricting the sticks too hard. I'm using a lot of wrist movement, but I'm also using a lot of finger movement in this. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So I'm still keeping the dynamics relatively high. I'm not doing these baby notes down here because I can't play my double strong, okay? You know, a lot of guys, when they try to play fast doubles, they can only play their doubles like this because they don't have the wrist strength to muscle them out. So a lot of this is training your muscles, your forearm muscles, your wrist muscles, to actually be able to play that high dynamic range all the way up here. Guys, I forgot to turn my mood lights on. I also realized I recorded this last part of the video without any real audio, just camera audio, and it sounded terrible, so I'm re-recording this last part. The struggles of online lessons. No matter how long you've been doing it, you still make brain farts all the time. Ah! Okay, so the next tips I wanna go over are gonna help you to smooth out your singles and your doubles, okay? This is when you're playing at faster tempos and you're really playing those roles. How are you gonna make those sound nice and smooth and consistent? Well, there are some technique things you can do, some practical easy fixes you can start doing that are gonna help you immediately start to improve that performance, okay? It comes down to how you're holding the stick and how you're using the rebound of the stick, a lot of it, okay? So the first thing I wanna go over is you've probably heard of the molar technique. So say you're playing some accented singles, like you're playing like triplets, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one and a two and a three and a four and a, okay? And you have this kind of rhythm happening. So let's look at just one hand. Now look at my hand, I'm playing an accent, and if you notice, my wrist is not staying in the same place. So I have this going on. So you're playing, right there I'm playing my main note, I'm playing, I'm dropping my stick for the second note, but on the third note, I'm bringing my hand up, I'm hitting a note on the upstroke, so my hand has this nice motion to it. Okay, so I got main note, middle note, up note. So I'm getting a note in on the upstroke, okay? As I lift my hand, I'm basically pointing my stick down, letting the, that natural movement of the stick, the weight wants to go down, so I'm gonna let it go down, and I'm gonna get a note in on the way up. So you could do this with just two notes as well if you're accenting this. Okay, think of it as like a whip, okay? So you're whipping that first note, and on the rebound, you're gonna bring your hand up, get a note in on the way up. Okay guys, now I have to interrupt this video to give you an important message. If you've been watching my videos and haven't subscribed yet, you gotta subscribe. Right down below, there's a little button that says subscribe. Hit that, right now. Did you do it yet? That's utilizing the molar technique. It's very effective, especially when you're playing those accented notes. The next thing I wanna talk to you about is changing up your grip, okay? So you've probably heard of different stick grips. You have, uh, really, I'm just gonna talk about American and French. Okay, American is when you're still, when you can see the tops of your hands, and my, my sticks come at this nice angle where the tips come in together. German's like way out here technically, and, and no one really plays like that. So it's more natural to hold your sticks in this American style. Uh, your arms aren't out here, they're just by your side. And um, you can see the tops of your hands. Now French is when you twist your sticks in this way, uh, they're more parallel 
to each other and you have your thumbs pointed up, okay? Now in this position, what I'm getting, I'm not gonna get good wrist movement in this position. So if you look at my wrist, I'm, I'm playing singles. It's very hard actually to, for me to get like a nice big wrist movement. I can do it, you know, I can do it with my wrist. It's not that I can't do it. It's just that I find it a lot easier when I'm in this American style to get a better accented large uh, wrist stroke, okay? But we're just talking about the fingers. So I want you to know both of these grips because if you're gonna be focusing more on finger control and just strengthening that finger control, play French grip like this, practice both grips. It's not bad to practice more than one grip, okay? So what you're gonna do here is you're just gonna practice keeping your wrists in the same place and what you're doing is you're using those back fingers. So if you look, my my thumb and my index finger are actually more of the, the primary um, fingers that are holding the stick in place. And I'm using my middle, my ring, and my pinky to pull that stick and get that action, okay? Get that finger. I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing that stick. As I throw the stick down, I have the rebound, and then I'm squeezing those fingers, okay? And that's gonna give me uh, really great finger control and this is this grip um, it's it's important to get good at you don't have to practice it all the time or, or play primarily this way but say you're playing your ride your hands over here and it's gonna be really natural to have your hand in that position um, when I play the bell though when I reach up and play the bell I do like to play in this normal American grip I would say but when I'm playing just real loose and just kind of on the main body of the ride, it feels good to play that French grip, okay? I do still have a lot of finger control that way. You can get some really fast um, notes in because you're used to playing those finger notes with that French grip. So the French grip is great. Now what you can do to just get familiar moving back and forth is you want your hands to be able to freely move in those grips. Um, if, you're, if you can only play like this and you can only play like this but you can't play anywhere in the middle, um, you know, it's not gonna be that useful. You wanna be a fluid on the kit, moving your wrists in different ways. So practice playing your singles nice and slow at an easy tempo for you, an American, and then try moving into the French grip like this. So you're doing both. And you're just kinda alternating back in and out. Okay, and you're trying to keep your sticks nice and even. As you can see, um, you want your left hand to be playing like your right hand or whatever weaker hand you have. You want that to be matching your dominant hand. So you play these notes faster. Okay, so those are two technique tips that you want to be practicing. Molar and then learning that French grip, being able to play that comfortable with that normal American grip. Now that's not everything that's gonna help you get better at playing these singles and, and doubles at faster tempos. Part of it is also just strengthening your forearm, strengthening your wrist muscles. So you have your fingers that you need to work on, but you also have your big notes. Because when you're playing on the kit um, and you're moving around the toms, it's you're, you're, you're playing harder notes. Um, it's, it's hard when you're moving your hands all over the place to just keep that nice light finger uh, grip, right? So you wanna be able to play that, those, those notes where you're really muscling it out. Now, in order to develop more strength in your, in your notes, you need to practice on surfaces that have uh, less of a rebound, right? So this is a conditioning pad. It's a marshmallow pad by Meinl. So Meinl sent me this pad. It's an awesome pad. I love it. Um, as you can see, it doesn't have a lot of volume. Um, it's not very loud. It's not a hard rubber pad. Um, when you play on your normal hard rubber pads, they are great. Um, they give you a ton of rebound. Right? But almost too much rebound. So when you're trying to work on developing those those wrist muscles, strengthening those, those natural muscles that are really going to give you a much bigger dynamic range, um, this is not the best pad to practice on, okay? So you want to practice on pads that have less rebound and you don't even need a pad if you don't have one of those you can just practice on something like a mattress or practice on a pillow uh, you've probably heard that before practicing on things that have no rebound it's going to help you really burn out those muscles you'll feel it right away you'll get tired very quickly um, but that's another way of training 
uh, these muscles to get stronger and more more stamina, okay, so that you can play them. Then when you go to something with rebound, wow, it's very easy. Now you can utilize those fingers a lot more. So when you're practicing and conditioning your wrist and forearm muscles, what you wanna do is just play those singles at a really high dynamic, right? Really large volume, full strokes here. All right, and you're gonna you're gonna burn yourself out. Just try to burn out. No fingers here. I'm really just using my arms, but I'm staying loose. I'm staying loose right there. I'm not completely um, gripping the stick hard. If if I squeeze the stick too hard, now I have no natural movement. All that energy is stuck in my arm. It's shooting up my arm. It's not going anywhere. It's not going out. Um, I'm still staying loose. I still have this nice loose grip. I'm still fulcruming mainly with my middle finger there. My back fingers are just kind of controlling, but I'm really, I'm really controlling. I'm really throwing that stick hard. I'm getting all that wrist moving in there. So just when you're warming up, you could practice unison notes like this, nice and big. Okay. Stick evenness, right? Whether you're playing a low dynamic range or a high dynamic range. Right and left stick should be nice and even. Okay, so burn out your forearms and your wrist by playing full stroke notes, full intensity on something that doesn't have a lot of rebound. That's gonna help you develop those muscles. So that way you're not just this guy that can only play fast notes like this, but you can really play them on the kit and make them sound good at higher volumes. Okay, moving on to doubles, let's talk about how you can improve your double stroke roll at faster tempos. Now, the main thing that I really wanna focus on on getting your double strokes to sound better and even and clean at faster tempos is the squeeze. Okay, so you have your main note happening and then you have that rebound note, that second note. Now, that second note should not be quieter than the first note. When you get faster, that is not gonna sound that good. It's gonna sound like your first note is really coming through and your second note's quiet. What you wanna do is have a strong second note. How do you get a strong second note at faster tempos? The way you wanna do that is focus on the squeeze of, okay, so you got your, you throwing your stick down and then you have a natural rebound happening, as you know. What are you gonna do with that rebound? You're gonna use it to your advantage as it comes back you're gonna squeeze. So I want you to try this. Squeezing, how fast can you grab your palm, your own palm, and how firm? Can you do that? That is a exercise in itself. Just do about 100 of those, you'll get a good squeeze going on, okay? So what you're doing is you're gripping that stick, really like a snap, just a quick snap method. You wanna get good at doing a quick snap in the open position to the closed position. That's the second note. That's where that strength is coming from, okay? That's where that solid second note is gonna come from. So practice it slow, focusing on that squeeze. Okay, so that's a good way to practice as well. Start slow, build up to your uh, top tempo, and then decelerate it back down. Now, a good little mental trick you can do to help you focus on the second note of the double stroke is to think of playing inverted doubles. Okay, inverted doubles start with a single. Now it's gonna be natural that that second note is the accent. And this is where that wrist movement is gonna feel more natural because you're really trying to get that second note accented. But you can see I'm, I'm really trying to get that second note to come through. And you can see the natural ebb and flow of my hand. I dip it in on that first note, and then for the second note, I'm coming through with that with that squeeze. 
dipping it down for the first note. Oops, dipping it down for the first note, squeezing on that second note. Dip, squeeze, dip, squeeze, dip, squeeze, dip, squeeze. That's what I'm going to call it. All these things are going to just take a lot of practice. Over time, though, you will start to develop. If you're using these good techniques, your double strokes will improve. Just be patient with yourself. Practice this every day if you can, or at least you know a few days a week where you're really practicing this. And it's a great way to warm up on the kit um, and just get it out of the way before you start playing the drums. Get your pad out and just focus on developing these uh, techniques in your hands and it'll start to improve these rolls for sure. The last quick exercise, this is a big lesson on developing your singles and doubles, right? We got a lot of different things we talked about, but the last thing I wanna leave you with is a second exercise, very simple. Um, you'll burn out quick, right? When you're focusing only on singles and doubles and you're playing that first exercise we talked about, it can be very, um, it can wear out your hands a lot. Maybe you just need to take baby steps. So another, excuse me, another exercise that you can do is focus on playing uh, four note groupings, five note groupings, seven note groupings, and nine note groupings. So you're playing a four note grouping in singles and then a four note grouping in doubles. So, and you're having a little space in between. Instead of going right into each one, give yourself a little space. A five, that's the double version single version. Alternate those. Sevens. You could alternate that. Okay, double version. Feels more natural to always start with the same hand on that because you're ending with your left. Okay, so singles. Doubles. Nines. Doubles. Okay, so those are just some groupings to work on. They're musical, they're practical. Um, you wanna be able to get comfortable playing those groupings and alternate them back and forth. Just gives your hands that little rest and pause. It also helps you just quickly think of how to switch back and forth between singles and doubles, which will help you blend them together, especially because rudiments are all a blend of singles and doubles. All right, guys, now if you want more training on hand development, if you want more training in your roles and your rudiments, I have a whole course that's dedicated to helping you develop your hands. We talk a lot about technique. We go a lot deeper into that. If you want more training on that, and if you want rudiment training, how to practice rudiments, the most important rudiments you need to know, then make sure to click the link down in the description below. I'll put a link to that. It's part of the Total Drumming Program. Uh, the Total Drumming Program is made up of six different courses, all right, but this is uh, one of the courses in the program that has a lot to do with drumming fundamentals, okay? So this is just important stuff, and, and you'll be surprised. I mean, a lot of guys who've been playing for a long time just really haven't spent the time to develop their hands, and it's holding back their playing. It's holding back their drumming. Uh, if you focus on these things, it's only going to help you. It's only going to help your vocabulary and your just clarity and, and control on the kit. Guys, if you want another resource, it's completely free. It's my free drum training, okay? It's a 30-minute, really in-depth training. It covers, like, all of these extremely important fundamental things we need to know on the drums. Uh, a lot of self-taught drummers miss out on certain things in their training. They're playing, um, you know, fun stuff that they learn online, and that's great, but they skip over some of the really needed uh, knowledge on the drums that that holds them back eventually so it's great to just go and watch this training see if you if you have any weak links if you skipped over any areas in your drumming that you need to improve on this this training will point those out it'll put you on a course to correct those I go a lot into detail about how to fix those and, and making sure that you're getting well-rounded training in your drumming so check that out that link is in the description as well so two links to check out there take advantage of that I keep saying it every video it's just a great free resource I put together for the drum community okay and also guys make sure to give me that thumbs up if you like this video it really does help the YouTube algorithm I'd really appreciate it guys if you enjoy this video just give it a thumbs up it's a quick tap like a doop it just helps out that YouTube algorithm. So thank you guys for watching this video so much. I'll see you on the next lesson coming up next week. Take care, practice, have fun, and I'll see you next time.